Go Island is brought to you by German Auto Import Network. Seeing each other, the role of media and indigenous voices in reshaping relationships. That's the topic of a dialogue series taking place at the Vancouver Island Conference Centre next week. It's the third element in a series that was launched by the Vancouver Island University in partnership with the City of Nanaimo and the Sonoma First Nation last spring. We're going to talk about that today on GO. An elderly couple gets help when their contractor can't finish the job and portraying one of Canada's most historical politicians. We're here at the gathering place at Vancouver Island University. We're going to look ahead at a big event taking place at the Vancouver Island Conference Centre next Wednesday. That's January the 29th. It will be moderated by Sean Atlio. We're going to talk to Dan Hurley and some Aboriginal students who make up community cousins here at Vancouver Island University later on this edition of Go Island. The event that's taking place is part of the Kanata Dialogue series. And I asked Dan Hurley earlier what Kanata means, and he said that it means village and it was an indigenous word, Kanata, which is a root word for Canada. We're going to have a all too brief discussion today on Go Island, but we're starting with a sad story that's actually turned happy. Taking on any home building renovations projects can be overwhelming, and there's an elderly couple in Nanaimo who got so far, and then they were abandoned, left behind mid-project by their contractor, but luckily things are turning around for the better. Here's Derek Johnstone. Last spring, Vancouver Island University committed to improving relationships between First Nations in our community and everyone else, I guess it's safe to say. Some racist letters had been published in the media. That was a launching pad for a discussion that took place. This is now the third element in a series coming up next, next week. But what's happened since last spring? A lot of progress has taken place. Back in September, we had a full week worth of activities here on campus to recognize Reconciliation Week, which was a national uh, dialogue and event to recognize uh, uh, rec reconciliation, that is to, re to reconcile with those Aboriginal peoples who were affected by residential schools and other forms of racism. And we had a number of uh, dialogues, uh, we had some films, we had residential school survivors here sharing their stories, and we had a community walk. We also made the commitment as an organization to help uh, educate and engage our employees. So we've actually had a number of workshops with some of our staff and faculty about uh, what reconciliation means and how we can participate in it. Now the third element of that is the public uh, event that we have planned for January 29th. And it is a public event open to everybody, limited seating at the Shaw Auditorium. And we've invited some uh, prominent speakers to talk about the issue of Indigenous peoples uh, and the media. This is a huge topic. Um, we're not going to get into the meat of it on this edition of Go Island. That's what the forum and the dialogue is for. And it is very limited seating, but it has national and international reach in the way of a brand new le website that was launched by VIU just today. Right. Tell me about how that session next week will be broadcast. Well, we are, uh, as, you, as you said, it's uh, not only an event for Nanaimo, it's an event for Canada and for those interested in, in these sorts of issues. So we're going to have uh, an ability for people to be able to engage in the dialogue. It'll be webcast on our website. Uh, we'll have the ability for people to ask questions online, whether it's through social media or whether it's uh, by email, as well as people in the audience. And we really want people to think about this issue and be able to contribute so that our speakers can then address it as part of this very important dialogue. And the speakers are, and the moderators are? The moderator for this event is uh, National Chief Sean Atlio, who is, of course, our Chancellor. Uh, we have Wab Canoe, who is a broadcaster, a rap artist, and activist out of Winnipeg. We've got Duncan McHugh, who's a CBC national reporter and professor at the University of British Columbia, and Judith Lavoie, who's a uh, freelance journalist in Victoria. So some very, very informative and engaging speakers at our event. Thank you. We're not even getting the conversation started today. We're just telling you about the conversation that's going to happen. We'll continue you to do that after a short break. Still to come, the transformation of a notorious house in Nanaimo and Tommy Douglas, the Arrows of Desire, hits the stage in Ladysmith. Did you know that uh, the Nanaimo Pain Clinic is here to 
um, help look after your individual needs and they will um, look at your situation and find a program that will fit you. After taking part in this program for about a year and a half, I'm happy to, to say that uh, I am back working and I think I'm a, a lot better dad and husband because I'm not dealing with chronic pain on an everyday, every uh, hour situation. And did you know that Vancouver Island University has now launched a brand new website, www.viu.ca? Check it out. That is where you can participate in the upcoming dialogue series that is called Seeing Each Other, the role of media and Indigenous voices in reshaping relationships. How are Aboriginal people portrayed through media? And by that, we don't just mean television and newspaper. We mean films and movies and television shows and commercials. How are... First Nations people portrayed that is up for discussion on Wednesday, January the 29th. You can participate by attending in person at the Vancouver Island Conference Center's Shaw Auditorium or online at www.viu.ca. There is a house in South Nanaimo that was notorious for drugs and other activity of crime. It has undergone a transformation recently and is now a safe haven for youth in the community. Here's Rayanne LaPlante. There are 14 bedrooms in that apartment building and applications for tenancy can be uh, submitted through the website www.nysa.bc.ca. We're throwing things over now to Matt Carter. It's time for another Mariner Minute. Well, more like a Mariner Minute and a half. You're watching Go Island on Shaw TV Channel 4. Gina Mowat is a community cousin here at Vancouver Island University, an ambassador, a mentor for Aboriginal students on campus, as well as one of the MCs at the upcoming Community Dialogue to examine the media's role in Indigenous reconciliation. How do you see the media portraying First Nations people today? Well, I think that the, the real foundational problem is that the image of Aboriginal people in the media, whether it be Hollywood films or the Nanaimo Daily News, is not owned by our people. It's a Western uh, view of Aboriginal people being um, implemented into Hollywood films, the feathers, the headdresses. It's not it's been commodified. Are you surprised at how far behind we are? Um, it is uh, annoying, I guess, mm -hmm. but um, I think that growing up, you, I hear at least the, the negatives, the stereotypes, they're very alive. And when we see things in the Nanaimo Daily News, like the Don Olson um, article, it's, it's not really surprising to me, it, but we, there are people that are working really hard to um, educate. Do you think that those kinds of um, portrayals are necessary to get this conversation started? Yeah, as much as it's um, blood boiling reading those, those words, I think that it is good to kind of get a kick in the butt to start talking, and that's what the Kanata Dialogues are really about. Right. I just think that the, the stories and the history of our people needs to be told by our people, and we have elders and we have community members that, that have that you know who can do that and so we need to start implementing that within within the media maybe not necessarily a broadcaster but the stories need to be told by the by the people themselves is that something that you're going to pursue Possibly. as a career i am right now kind of you are right now <laughs> what is your role going to be on wednesday night next week uh ashley okranik and i are actually the masters of ceremony so we'll be uh, introducing and um, welcoming everyone to the event do you think you're going to be surprised by some of the things that might come up? I'm always thinking that yes, that would be a good thing. If people are being really honest, then maybe some surprising things will come out so that they can be discussed and progress can be made to move forward. Yeah, I think that there will be some things that are, are um, shocking to some people, but I'm, the panelists sounds amazing. We have Wab Canoe and the others, and I think that we'll really get down to some uh, 
some good conversations. Excellent. Okay, and you can be a part of that conversation online or in person. Vancouver Island Conference Center's Shaw Auditorium, Wednesday, the 29th of January. It's free. Starts at 6:30. Or go online, www.viu.ca. We're going to throw things over now to Annette Lucas now with a local actor, writer, and performer who is portraying one of Canada's most well, historic and um, respected historical politicians. Tommy Douglas, The Arrows of Desire, runs at Lady Smith's Little Theatre January 24th until February the 9th. And you can visit ladysmithlittletheatre.com for tickets and more details. That brings us to the end of this edition of Go Island. The Kanata Dialogue draws national speakers and participants to the Shaw Auditorium at Vancouver Island University next Wednesday, January the 29th. It's a free event, 6.30, looking at media's role in repairing and reconciling relationships between non Aboriginals and Aboriginals in our community and beyond. You can also participate online, www.viu.ca. That brings us to the end of this edition uh, and then more because I'm actually over time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Go Island is brought to you by German Auto Import Network. Clothing supplied by Catwalk Fashions. Kate's hair and aesthetics provided by Matteo Salon.